The Tiger Speaks to You, Tales from the Wild Imagination. Faithful Hans and the Queen of the Cats The miller is the jolly fellow who grinds the grain that the farmer grows. It's because of the miller that we have cakes and bread and so many good things to eat. Well, this miller had a mill, but he had no sons or children of his own. Only three apprentices, the eldest called Tobias, the second Christopher, and the third poor Hans. And the miller one day gathered the apprentices and said, My apprentices, I am very pleased with your hard work. At his words, Tobias and Christopher smiled at each other and then sneered at Hans. But Hans didn't mind. He was stroking the miller's cat. In fact, the miller had three cats. They were great use in keeping the mice away. Well, said the miller, I have decided that I am getting on in years. I am not as young as I used to be. And so I would like to give my mill to one of you. I would like to give my mill to whomever can bring me the finest horse. The finest horse, said Tobias, why I will bring you such a horse. The finest horse, said Christopher, I will bring you such a horse. Me too, said Hans. The elder two just looked at Hans, laughed and said, Hans is dumb, Hans is slow, don't ask Hans, he won't know. They thought that this was the funniest thing on the earth, but Hans paid them no attention. He was stroking the miller's cat. And so the three apprentices set off, in search of a horse. They travelled all day, but had no luck, and they needed somewhere to sleep for the night. It was Hans that spied a cave and said, Look, let's sleep in there for the night. And so the three of them crept into the cave. They crawled deeper and deeper, and as they were lying down, Tobias nudged Christopher and said, Christopher, Christopher, look, Hans is sleeping. Let's creep off whilst he's asleep. I am tired of him traipsing around after us. Yes, good idea, said Tobias. Hans is dumb, Hans is slow. Don't ask Hans, he won't know, laughed Tobias and Christopher as they left the cave as quietly as they could. When Hans awoke, he was all alone. It was dark, cold, and he was afraid. Tobias, Christopher, where are you? But though he called, he was still alone, and so he elbowed his way out of the dark cave and he found himself in a wood. This wood is scary, said Hans. It's no better than the cave. And what if there are wolves here? I best get out of here as quickly as possible. And so Hans walked swiftly through the forest, but he stopped in his tracks when he saw a tabby cat with green eyes in the middle of the path. The cat fixed her green gaze upon Hans 
and said, You must be Hans, and I know your secret desires. I know your dreams and your wishes. I know what it is that you are seeking. You are looking for a horse, of course. Well, how about that, said Hans, a talking cat? This must be a magic forest. And if the cat can talk, who knows what else it can do? I will go with the cat. And so Hans followed the cat, and the cat led Hans to her kingdom. The cat and Hans were welcomed by three kittens, one white, one brown, and one ginger. The little kittens ran around the big mother cat, and they licked Hans, and their tongues were curiously rough, but their ears were soft, and their bellies were fluffy. So, said the cat with the green eyes, will you work for me for seven years, and be my servant, if you do the work I set you? When the seven years are up, you shall have a horse the like of which has never been seen. The finest horse in the world shall be yours. Yes, yes, said Hans, I will work for you. In that case, we shall have our supper. The cat led Hans to a table laid out with mouse sandwiches, glasses of milk, and other delicious things to eat. But the cat didn't make Hans eat the sandwiches. Hans ate a normal food and was very grateful for it. After supper, the three kittens played musical instruments. The white kitten played the cello, the brown played the fiddle, and the ginger kitten played the trumpet so loudly that Hans thought her whiskers would pop out of her cheeks. The cat came towards Hans, flashed its green eyes and said, Will you dance with me? I have never danced with a cat before, so I will not, said Hans. But the cat didn't mind and started to move gracefully around the room, leaping this way and that to the sound of music that the kittens made. It was soon time for bed, and the white kitten took off Hans's shoes. The brown kitten drew back the bed covers, and the ginger kitten blew out the candle, and all three said, Good night, Hans. In the morning, the white kitten returned and tied his shoelaces. The brown kitten washed his face with her tongue and the ginger kitten wiped him clean and dry with three swishes of her tail. And one day, Hans appeared before the cat with green eyes and said, I have been your faithful servant for seven long years. I have worked hard and done all that you have asked of me. But now I would like my horse and I would like to return home. The cat smiled and looked at Hans with her green eyes and said, You have been a faithful servant, you have worked hard, but you can't count very well. You have only worked for six years. You have one more year to work until your promise is fulfilled, and I know exactly what I want you to do. The cat led Hans down to the banks of the river and said, Look, you see where the river sinks down? On that spot I would like you to build me a summer house where I can go with my kittens and we can catch mice and eat little fishes by the river bank. Hans spent one more year working hard and when the year was done, the summer house was completed, and the cat came to Hans and said, Hans, 
faithful hands. You have worked for seven long years, and I am now going to show you something which no human has ever seen. Come closer now. And the cat flashed her green eyes and swished her tail three times, and when Hans looked into the summer house, there stood thirteen magnificent horses, each one beautiful and tall and strong. The cat smiled at Hans and said, You, Hans, shall have the finest of these horses, but you must wait for three more days. Return home to the miller, and when the three days are done, you shall have your horse. At these words, Hans fell into a deep sleep. On waking, he found himself once again in the deep, dark cave, and he thought to himself, maybe this has been a dream. But he looked at his clothes, and he saw how ragged they had become. Then he realized that not once in seven years had the cat given him a change of clothing, so indeed his clothes were reduced to tatters. At this, Hans scrambled out of the cave, and he made his way back towards the mill. Hans's heart leapt with joy when he saw the old mill, and there waiting for him was the kitten he had petted before leaving. The kitten was very pleased to see him and licked his fingers. Well, Tobias and Christopher were less pleased to see him. They burst out laughing when they saw his ragged clothes. Hans is dumb. Hans is slow. Don't ask Hans. He won't know. Of course he hasn't got a horse. They laughed and laughed as if this was the funniest thing. And indeed, Hans was a ragged sight to behold. When the miller saw him, he said, I'm afraid, Hans, you cannot come in my house and eat at my table. If anybody was to see you looking like that, I would be terribly ashamed. You must eat outside with the horses, and you must sleep in the hen house with the hens. And so for three days, Hans ate with the horses and slept in the hen house. When the three days had passed, a magnificent carriage pulled up outside the mill, and from the carriage there stepped the most beautiful woman that anyone had ever seen. The miller and his two apprentices gazed up at the magnificent carriage in awe. Where is Hans? the queen asked. Hans? said the miller. Hans? said Tobias. Hans? said Christopher. Yes, said the queen. Hans? Hans is in the hen house, said the miller. What? Faithful Hans in the hen house? Fetch him at once commanded the queen. And so the two apprentices ran off and fetched Hans. He was taken down to the river, bathed and dressed in the finest clothes, and then brought back before the queen. And where are your horses? the queen asked Tobias and Christopher. They went off and fetched their horses. And they were indeed sad-looking creatures. One was blind, and the other was lame. These are your great horses, laughed the queen. They look like broken old donkeys. And then she turned and pointed to Hans's horse. Look, she said, this magnificent creature is Hans's horse. The miller turned to Hans and said, 
Hans, you are the winner, fair and square. You shall have my mill. He shall have no such thing, replied the queen. What does he need a mill for? He shall be my husband, and he shall live in my palace, filled with gold and silver and jewels. You see, the summer house that Hans had built, that had been transformed into a magical palace. And this was where Hans and the queen spent the rest of their days. Mice don't like this story, but cats love it. If you ever see some cats cozying up besides a fire, you can be sure that they will be telling each other their favourite story, the story of faithful Hans. Thank you.